All set? Okay, this is the uh, Waitley Finance Committee and Select Board Joint Meeting um, on April 4th, 2023. Um, we will have our agenda where we will uh, go over the minutes. And then uh, following that, the agenda has, we will look, we will discuss the police budget, then the fire, transfer station, SCEMS will be in. And finally, we'll uh, have some additional things to do at the end. So that's what we have right now. Um, everyone had a chance to take a look at the, the last meeting. Make a motion we approve the minutes of the last meeting. All right, sorry, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Get anybody Do we have any, I don't believe uh, Joyce is reading. Hi, Joyce. Um, okay. All right. Um, we don't normally do this, but I think it's a good idea to do this. And um, prior to getting into the actual budgets themselves, time for public comment. Is there a public, anyone would like to speak regarding anything that's on the agenda this evening? Okay, then let's get right into it. Okay, the first up is the police. We have Chief Sabine here. Oh, Sabine. That's and me. for all those out there wondering, um, yes, if we could read. Um, Chief, let me tell you, you use the smallest font you could possibly find. Well, that's me. It's going to be a lot of stuff. I used to, I used to be able to see. Yeah, you know? me too. This is my um, first official meeting with glasses. <laughs> so this is, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but you are requesting. Why don't you tell us what you're requesting? I can't read it. <laughs> so I am, well, not me, but through the police department, the, the budget that I submitted um, is pretty much a level service budget with the exception of two two different items. Um, I don't think those are the two biggest items. Those are the increases. I don't know if you just want to get right into that. Yep. Or if you want to go line by line, how you want to do it. Why don't you just think we really need to. First of all, tell us what the total budget request is. Okay. Dollars. So the total budget, and this may have changed recently uh, slightly. Um, I have 259-309-75. Um, I'm not sure if that's the most up-to-date one that you have. Okay. okay. That's what I've that's got. Good. That's what that says. <clears throat> all right. Okay. So that request. Just a couple of, I guess, housekeeping things as far as the uh, police chief salary. You notice that there's the addition of 2287. It's not really an addition. It's just that inadvertently got left out of the um, last <coughs> budget, so it never got voted in. That was my mistake. So that's just adding that to what it should have been. So that's not really an increase for that 2287 amount. Um, and a couple of the other things are just miscellaneous, you know, um, contract things, annual maintenance agreement things, cost of doing business goes up. So a little bit of an increase. I think it was four fifty or five five hundred dollars that went up there. Um, so nothing major in that sense. So the the first um, first item I'm looking at. This year, and I'm not sure if you just have the budget or what you have. Did you? Did they get the? We have the yeah, okay. we have that. Do you have this one? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um. So I just I gave a, an overview of what I'm looking for as far as um a full time a, a third full time position. That is essentially what we're looking for in the police department. This is at the year three that we've been looking looking at this position. Uh, each year we look at it and gift. Kind of more and more demanding, I guess, to, to put it that way. Um, so I just listed it out as our current positions, what we have, 
as far as our salary budget goes for the current positions, that's uh, police chief and the sergeant full time positions. Uh, we are down to six uh, part time positions. So it was eight up until recently. <clears throat> We're now down to six. That's the total salary budget 196, 391. Um, part of that <clears throat> includes 53,451 for part time shifts. That's 260 patrol hours, an additional 56 hours for vacation time uh, coverage for a total of 316 hours. That's what we cover currently with the budget. Um, so requesting the full-time position, just going over to the right side, just the proposed position, just adding a full-time position. We would still have six part-time officers. Um, as we've discussed in the past, part-time by having more part-time officers it doesn't really increase the budget because we still have a set number of shifts that they right. cover so just because we have six versus eight and there's there's not really much of a, a difference there um so that would that would raise the total salary budget up to 220 192. um so that we talked about it last year um the, the biggest part of Looking for this position, I know from the select board's perspective and from the finance committee's perspective, the discussions that we've had, um, there was a desire to reduce the number of part-time shifts in order to, to help offset the, the increase on the budget. So this year, in particular, we've kind of we're kind of running into a position where we're not really having much of a choice um, because of police reform, and that's a whole other hour-long discussion that that we could have. Uh, but some of the things with police reform, the biggest impact that we're seeing is that um, it's going to have an impact on our part-time officers. So with police reform, everybody has to be certified to, a, to the same level. Uh, so when you're a certified police officer, you're certified. There's no part-time, there's no full-time anymore. You're just certified. Um, so the problem that we're kind of foreseeing is that one, these officers that have to go to additional training. It's a two, an additional 200 hours of training that they have to go through in order to, to get certified. Um, we have one person going through currently, two more people that are gonna be going through um, to become certified for the next group, the third and last group for next year. So uh, those, those positions, everybody has to be certified. So we've got to spend more time, more <laughs> hours um, certifying people to, to become certified police officers. So we've lost a couple of officers that, that aren't gonna be able to attend that training because it's, there's three weeks worth of training that you have to attend in person. So one person only has two weeks vacation, so he can't take three weeks off to, to attend training. And um, he's getting up there in age, so he's, he's not really interested in um, going through the additional 200 hours of training. Uh, we have another officer that's gonna be aging out, so to speak, you get to age 65, um, you either need a waiver um, or some special circumstance. Right now, I'm not sure how they're handling waivers because of police reform, they're not really issuing waivers. In that sense, we've done them in the past, so you can work from 65 to 70. Um, but again, that officer is not interested in, in attending the, the additional training uh, either. So the second part of that is once those officers become certified, we now have to look at, from an investment perspective, for lack of a better term, uh, we have to look at it for our officers. Because if we have, we currently have six officers. If other departments around are hiring full-time people and they're they're paying better and they're offering benefits, we're going to start losing those people. They're going to be laterally transferring outside of the department. Then we're going to be left with, we're not going to be able to cover any of the shifts that the, the part-time officers cover. Um, Hopefully we don't get to that point, but I'm sure it's in here. I'm sure I can find it. Mm -hmm. What's the investment in the training for one officer? Mm -hmm. Our our you said we invested. In oh, for the, for the yeah for the yeah, bridge, but, what we call the bridge academy. Um, it's about forty five hundred dollars to, to attend all the training. Um, there's a portion of that training where they have to go. It's called emergency vehicle operation and control. They have to go out to a, a course and do a, a week-long driving course. So there's some money there for paying for fuel and things like that. So there's a lot of added things into it. The, the physical, they have to attend a, a 
physical, which is different than just a regular <laughs> trade, trade point and physical that costs some money. So there's a <laughs> there plus the training itself. So we're looking at about forty five hundred dollars for the first first person that went through this. Um, so looking at again the potential for losing additional part time officers, whether they don't want to go through the training or whether they're going to laterally transfer to another department. Um, we're looking at still being able to provide the, the best coverage that we can in town. So adding that third full-time position, uh, we're looking at cutting a reduction of about $22,362 in part-time shifts. That's about 132 shifts that we're cutting out. Right now we have on average about 23 shifts a month that are covered. Um, we're gonna be going down to 12 shifts a month. That are going to be covered by the uh, part-time officers the full-time position part of that would would include some weekend hours as well so i know that was a point of discussion in the past so, so we're going to have to look at that um we're going to be expecting some flexibility from whoever it is coming in to you know, find the, the best schedule that we can mm -hmm. that, that works the best um we're also looking at the reduction a little bit of a reduction as far as um, the shifts go because we're not going to be covering as many uh, of the vacation shifts for the full-time employees because there'll be some overlap and some flexibility. So hopefully we can fill those, uh, some of those vacation shifts. We can just have another person working that shift instead of you know, having part-time officers cover that. We're able to reduce it a little bit there as well. Um, so that brings the total down from 316 shifts down to 184 shifts, and um, I think you're looking at $31,089 that's requested in the budget to cover the, the part-time positions. A couple of other, um, I call them minor things because in the in the big scheme of things, it's it's not as as large of an issue. But with losing the, the two officers, we're we're cutting out about 16, almost $1,700 because that's hours that we don't have to pay for in-service training for those two officers. So we're able to reduce that a little bit in the budget as well. Um, <clears throat> so this full-time position, I'm looking at starting it at $48,880. That's $23.50 an hour. It was just a, a round number looking at what other full-time positions we're making. It's really a hard number to, to figure out because when you look at some of the, the survey studies, some departments list sergeants as full-time officers and some mm -hmm. so it can raise the pay or some sergeants are listed as full-time officers so that could lower the pay so it, just kind of the numbers that i was looking at I, I thought that was a fair fair wage to start um, adding a little bit of overtime to that um, for each of the full-time positions adding some overtime for that will also reduce <clears throat> having to fill those shifts Mm -hmm. um, with with other people, so um, the comp time thing is going to kind of go away. Right now, we the full time uh, officer uses comp time as compensation for any hours worked over forty. So that would that would probably alleviate most of that. So instead of comp time, we'll be adding some um, overtime costs in there. So it'll provide more coverage, patrol coverage out on the street. So. So that's ultimately what I'm looking at doing, increasing the patrol coverage, which in turn would increase public safety. Um, that's that's the big, big thing. Um, the other big thing looking at, it's not really a, a cost savings looking at the budget, but we're looking at about $10,000 that we could potentially save without having to train a brand new officer if we, if we hired from within our current pool of part-time officers. Um, so that's a that's a big thing. We have a 350 hour field training program. Plus, there's all kinds of new regulations as far as um, the peace officer standard and training commission goes. So we're looking at about a ten thousand dollar savings for not having to, to train a, an outside officer. Uh, again, re reducing the reliance on part time officers. Having the additional person would increase community outreach. Traffic enforcement will have more patrol coverage out on the road doing the traffic enforcement. We gain an officer that'd be dedicated to town. Not that our officers aren't currently dedicated, but having somebody that's dedicated 40 hours per week versus somebody that's dedicated maybe one one or two shifts a month is a, 
it's a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, I can I can use that that person. I can delegate different duties. We can spread things out more. Um, we can make much better use of somebody that's dedicated on a full time basis. Uh, talk about the flexible schedule. <clears throat> And I just I added on there just so you could see the, the national average of 2.43 officers per 1,000 residents that would put Waitley in 3.88 officers. So that puts us right in line with you know the national standard what we should yeah. be in Massachusetts a little bit higher. Um, but looking at that that national standard that will give us three full time and then the 0.88 would be the you know the rest of the the part time officer there. So it's great. Um, so that's okay. that's. What I'm looking at as far as the full time position goes, if anybody has any questions, any questions for the Chief Sabine? Yeah. Anyone? Tom? No. I just have, I just want to run back. Um, <coughs> full time salary of 48880. Mm -hmm. And how did you ar arrive at that again? So that was looking at the salary survey, trying to average out the numbers. The numbers weren't really averaging out because because of the, the way the, the salary survey is. So some of the numbers were higher because some towns list sergeants as full-time officers or, or vice versa. So there may be a, an extremely low salary, there may be an extremely high salary. Um, so I looked at what the average, you know, the towns that we normally compare to, um, what, what they're paying their officers. And that was right around right around that range. So I, I tried to pick a, an even number just to make it easy instead of a percentage or an average. Um, just pick the nice round number. Okay. <clears throat> I'm good. Um, and the, the over, I don't know if I mentioned the overtime cost. That's, that's about $3,100 for the yeah. two officers. See you have there. Um, what's going on with Seamus? What's going on with him? We want, a, we want a little dog update. <laughs> I can give you a dog update. Uh, no. has, has, has he been in the field working? Has he been consoling and doing his job? He, he has. He's been consoling me every single day. <laughs> he helps me every day. He comforts me. Yeah. It's my therapy. I get to talk to somebody. <laughs> He is usually with me every day. Yeah. I did bring him home before the meeting because I didn't want to focus, listen, focus on him. Yeah. That's something to listen to, right? He doesn't talk back either. No. He just sits and listens. Okay. Um, so yeah, Seamus, we as you can see in the budget, I've I've invested personally about twenty two hundred dollars into him in the last year. Yeah. Um, that's in training, that's food, that's treats, that's everything that you need for, for a dog, mm -hmm. uh, grooming, so on and so forth. Um, who owns so, the dog? I do. <clears throat> yeah, so it was donated to me. We actually had a from the, the breeder that we got a couple of other dogs from. We had a dog that died. So when I was talking to the breeder, I was telling him that I wanted to look at a, a therapy dog. He's like, Oh, well, I'll give you another dog to replace the one that you lost. We yeah, lost yeah. one of the dogs. Um, so I got the dog and decided that we could. We could train it starting at a young age mm -hmm. to work as a as a therapy slash company dog. You think you could, you're going to bring him into the school? The, yes, he, he's been in. Yeah, the, the school is a different animal because um, kids, you know, kids they see a dog, they tend to like flock to him, and he, we're still working on the, the training and socialization aspect of it. He has good days and bad days. He's only a year old, so a little over a year old, so he has good days and bad days. Yeah. Um, not bad days in the sense where he's going to attack anybody, right? But just bad That's days good. where he just he just doesn't want to be yeah. bothered. So does he like officer baits? Does he does he <laughs> no. take to him? No, no. So that's a no. perfect. Okay, perfect that, so that's working out. <laughs> <laughs> Tries to bite him on a daily basis. <laughs> Chases him through the locker room. Just like the chief, he chews my butt every day. So. <laughs> All right. And so yeah, I'm looking okay. at a little bit less than what okay. you know, about yeah. half of what it yeah. is to cover some because we have some more training. So at this right. age, we can actually start therapy dog training, yeah. which is going to be another expense. Um, cool. So additional training, yeah. um, feeding, you know, vet, all the all the other things that that come into play. Okay. Uh, hoping to just I know we discussed it last year when with the select board when this first first started when we first rolled out the, the program. Um, and they appointed Seamus as the official Wade Police canine dog. Yeah. 
Um, there was some discussion then about in the future, like possibly adding some money to the budget to, to help offset those those costs. So that's the that's the only other increase in the budget. He's a standard poodle. He's about fifty pounds. He's You've got to shave him up like with the ball and the tail. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Puppy cut. It's one way length the whole thing. I can't can't do the poodle cut. Okay. Very Can I quick. mention something? Go. Um, okay. So I moved to Waitley, well, I guess 15 years ago, but I've been here for a while and my now husband, I got married, um, called the Waitley Police Department and told um you guys, I'm not sure exactly who took the call. I, I'm just trying to say thank you for taking the call because I had a crazy guy who was crazily insane, um, very, very bad. And you guys it, it, trying to hurt me or something or just crazy, just crazy. He, he wasn't rational. And you guys said, I said to my now husband, shut up. No, don't bother them. They've got bigger problems. They don't need my little stupid little client who is in a plane. But you guys said to him, please call us always. And then I just felt a little bit safer. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Absolutely. And you know, it's no problems too, too big or too small. Well, I did not want him bothering you, but he did. And then never bothered. My good health, uh, yeah, I felt more safe. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. Any other questions? Um, related to money, but not related to this. Mm -hmm. uh, tasers and body cams. What yep. are our options if, i know it's on your proposal yeah but if you can go get yeah, that because i don't think we went through that with the capital last oh you did yeah yeah no i can i can go through that okay. as well so we're looking <clears throat> right now let's get for the uh all right so <clears throat> so the budget request for or the capital request for tasers, uh, new tasers and new body cam. So it's, I guess it's kind of a long story. I'll try to shorten it, I can shorten it as much as I can. But again, police reform, there's some regulations in police reform that, have, that are forcing us in a sense to, to relook at our body cameras. The current body cameras that we have, um, those cameras are, there's a number of things I've got a list uh, there's a number of things that they're that makes them out of compliance with what the requirements from post C. Uh, that's the Peace Officer Standard and Training Commission. So there's certain things that that make our current body cameras out of compliance. They voted on the actual regulations that made it a CMR. They haven't voted the CMR yet. They're going to be doing that. They could do it tomorrow. They could. I'm not sure when it's when it's scheduled for, but it's going to be very soon. It has to be soon because some of these things already went into, technically already went into regulation according to the time frame. Um, so looking at our body cams, we, we have to look at new body cams. So looking at new body cams, the state contract, they have Axon as, as the contract inventor for, um, for cameras or for um, body cams and tasers. So the, the thing with Axon is if, if we purchase the body cams from Axon, we can get in on a program where they also supply the tasers. So it's a, it's a two-part thing. So we get the taser and we get the body cam. It kind of comes as a pair and they work in conjunction with each other. So if I draw the taser for any reason, the body cam automatically comes on. Um, if we there's also the option if we draw our firearm that the body cam comes on there's a sensor that we can get from axon that'll that'll cover that as well so some of these things are coming into play as far as the police reform um use of force guidelines if they want so they're they're actually telling us that they have to have these these options if you draw the taser the camera has to come on so we have to have a camera that works in conjunction with our other equipment um, so this is this is the best option that we have our current equipment won't won't do those things. They won't work in conjunction with each other. How like old that. is our current equipment? Not it's that old. It's about six years, going on seven years. That's about the life expectancy. 
if, if you know anything about cameras or tasers or electronics, they say about five years. That's what the manufacturer says. Um, we then would they last longer? Probably, but we're going to be in we're going to be out of compliance. Mm -hmm. And then if so, what do we do with the old ones? Flush them down the toilet. No, you can't. <laughs> you know, well, no, you can't. But that they're junk. Well, no, we could give them to the fire department. We could we could use them for training training purposes. We doing drills. We could do. I mean, they're, they're yeah. cameras. Yeah, they're cameras that we could use. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have any of the capabilities like the wireless capabilities that they're requiring that we have. So um, they is, they are requiring us to spend a lot of money. They, who's they the, are. Who's they? Well, this the is state? The, the state. It's the Peace Officer Standard Training Commission. But the, the, the issue is, is they say that if, if you have body cams and tasers, you have to be in compliance. You have to have meet these regulations. So there's nothing that says we have to have them, but I don't want to go backwards. Um, I think it would be a detriment to the department going backwards, getting rid of body cams, getting rid of tasers. If if anybody's watched any videos, I mean, we've had a few incidents, but tasers are a huge deterrent. I, I would think that from a, a town's perspective that you'd rather um, us just deal with an individual if we have to tase them, then have to deal with a lawsuit because there's a big pile of 10 people trying to subdue somebody. Mm -hmm. Tasers, the, the incidents that we've had, we haven't actually had to deploy probes into somebody because the, the only incidents that we've had, as soon as they see the taser, <clears throat> they're done. They shut down. They're, they don't want any part of it. Yeah. So that's that's a huge thing for officer safety, for public safety. We don't want to beat people up. We don't want to get beat up. And if we could just have one right. simple tool, yeah, it, there's an expense to it. Um, but just having that one simple tool is, has saved a lot of a lot of people and a lot of officers. You guys still carry nightsticks? We do. Okay. We don't call them nightsticks anymore. They're they're batons. Okay. Because nightstick sounds like you're going to beat somebody at night that, in alley. In my day, that was a deterrent. <laughs> yeah. So the, the, the new deterrent is the taser. <laughs> and that was okay. And the the body cams. I mean, grand. Frank, frankly, from the body cam perspective. Um, it's it's been a huge, huge deterrent as far as uh, looking at the what do you call it the uh, transparency, looking at transparency and looking at officer accountability and public accountability with these cameras. There's nobody on our department that wants to go backwards. Yep. Nobody on our department that that balked at this when we first went with the cameras. Everybody wanted it, yep. and we've had numerous complaints. Not legitimate written complaints but numerous people that have come to me and said oh this officer was rude or he said this or he said that and i tell them well, i'll go back and look at the the body cam footage and they say oh you have body cams but yeah everything's recorded oh well he wasn't really rude he just wasn't and they start backpedaling so we haven't had one complaint that actually went to fruition because of the body cams it's so these, these are the issues yeah. i mean people are suing towns left and right right because they don't they don't have these options. They don't have the option to see what's going on yeah. at the scene. I know it's an investment. I know sixty thousand dollars is is a lot of money. It's it is. Yeah. it's. I'm looking at sixty thousand dollars as a one time request. There's there's a second option to that, um, which is over a five year period. We pay the first year. We pay for the equipment and we pay for the first year subscription, if you will, mm -hmm. that's about 16,000 16, and change. And then every year after that, um, it starts at, I believe, $8,300, and then it goes up incrementally for the next five years by 3%. Mm -hmm. So actually, we could actually save money if we bought it all up front. You, know, you could yeah. save a couple of thousand dollars by buying it up front as opposed to doing it every year. Yeah. Um, at the end of those five years, we're looking at either subscription costs or you are going to be new replacing one. it. You'll What's be that? Replacing You'll be replacing it. The state will want you to have color. Yeah. Or, you know, be, you know, yeah. Oh, I hear you. Will be I hear you. There. Yeah. There's, again, there's there's a lot of unfunded mandates out there. The state came to us and said, you have to train officers at 200 hours. And they gave us Not nothing. No. And then they came around and said, we'll give you a little bit of money. Here's a little bit. Here's a million dollars to help. And we said, well, we got 3,000 officers that we got to train. What's a million dollars going to do? Right. It's not going to give you much at all. So our legislators, local legislators and representatives are coming through and they're getting some reimbursement money for us. <clears throat> so I think the first year we got $2,600 $2, back. We spent 45, they gave us 26, so about half of it yeah. that we got back. We're looking at applying for it again this year to, to get some, some refund money back yeah, for that because nice. that's, a, that's a big expense. Sure. 
you know, four thousand forty five hundred dollars per per officer. That's that's a big expense. But I'm sure you know I, I look at this as a as an investment for the town. I look at the, the grants we've gotten in the past, I look at the donations we've gotten in the past in the town. We have a hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment at the station that the town didn't have to pay a penny for because we got it off grants and we got it off donations. Right. So I think I mean this is the first other than a police cruiser, this is the first like large item expenditure. Paid for six years ago. Well, no, we two two of them, two of the tasers were paid for uh, on a donation. We paid for one out of the police department, which was twelve hundred dollars, and then cameras came off of a donation as well from Yankee Candle. Yeah, so donations, we so we didn't even pay for all this stuff <laughs> six yeah. years ago. So I mean, we've we've gotten away with a lot of things over the years without having to, to pay for it. Yeah. But I think it's from my perspective, it's it's a very 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 good investment. Seeing as we haven't had to come to you guys and ask for a whole lot other than a, a cruiser every few years. Every few years. Okay. Any final questions for the chief? Okay. We thank you very much for the explanation. Sure. For your hard work. And believe me, we all look at the police department and the fire and everybody else. They're all investments in the town. So that's what we do. Thank you. And to answer your question that you ask every year, yes, the town is safe. <laughs> the count is safe. That's the All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Perfect. Okay. Next, we have uh, we have fire department um, coming in, and we have um, everybody knows John. Does everybody know JP? The man to John's left, JP. Okay. Everybody know? Okay. Um, I guess so. It 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 appears as though he will be John's replacement in the future. Um, select board approved it. Select board approved it. Um, and um, he's been on the fire department for a long time. A long time. <laughs> All righty. Well, welcome. Okay. Okay. What can you tell us about the fire department budget? All right. So um, I ran some numbers and um, went over them with the fire chief um, for the upcoming uh, fiscal year. And we're looking at pretty much um, being level funded. I think there's like $638 difference. Um, the handout that I just gave you today is, I think it's similar to what Brian had. I just colored the um, line items that are green that have decreased, um, and the orange ones have increased just to make it a little bit easier to read. Um, I just, I don't have that much knowledge about the individual line items in this budget because I haven't managed this particular budget before, but I, going through the, um, Last year's expenditures with John, um, we were able to pull out some specifics, um, some areas that we could lower them and some areas that shouldn't be increased. But one of the areas to lower was uh, postage. You know, obviously things aren't really getting mailed like they used to. It's electronic. Um, and then the um, the heat, um, I lowered that to 15, um, excuse me, the one. Um, $2,000 to uh, better reflect um, what it's been in the previous um, three fiscal years. Mm -hmm. um, the ones that increased, uh, the Comcast has pretty much uh, been consistent on the last two years at um, right around uh, $1,400 or $1,500. So I increased that. It was a 13% increase. And then the other one is training and recertification. Uh, one of my goals for the upcoming year uh, as a new fire chief is going to be to increase the amount of training that we're doing um, in two ways. We're going to have uh, monthly drills, but also um, I'm trying to organize a plan where we can have three department members every month doing um, two hours of work in the fire station. So we we'll, can call it a truck check. You can call it whatever you want. But I think the main responsibility would be to have an officer um, an experienced firefighter and a newer firefighter. Um, and let 
them have a time to inventory all of our equipment, um, clean it, what needs to be cleaned, but also to provide some one-on-one -on -one training, um, the officer can train the uh, two firefighters on you know, specific training needs they might need outside of a larger group. Um, so that's where that $2,000 uh, increase came from. Um, and whatever we do over and above that training and recertification, um, we would be taking out of the fire, uh, firefighter salary section. My understanding is that we'll talk about the personnel committee recommendations at another date. That will be at another date, right? Okay. Because that's going to, there will be more, the discussion will be sure. yep. more extensive than it will be. Yep. Yeah, just um, get it in here. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for the um, the um, fire department budget. There is a line uh, down at the bottom uh, for firefighting AFF uh, grant match. Um, I have once again put in for an SCBA uh, breathing apparatus grant um, through the federal government, mm -hmm. and that. It's a substantial grant. If we get it, it's going to be in the $160,000, $170,000 range. Um, there will be a share of it that we'll have to pay, but I, I'm reasonably certain that we would be able to absorb that with our budget. I think if we get awarded the grant, it'll be probably be early enough in the uh, fiscal year where we can take that our share of it out. And I think the, our share would be um, in the, um, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but in the um, six or Six uh, six thousand to seventy five hundred dollar range somewhere in there, um, and we could certainly take that out of our equipment uh, line item. Yeah. Do I have any questions? Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Uh, I have two questions. How sure. many firefighters do we have right now? How many are on the roster? John? Okay. And then the other is about the budget. Um, I and maybe this is for John because it's asked. So in 2021 and 2022, we had we spent quite a bit more than the budget line for fire station maintenance and alarm monitoring. But I, I guess you must think that's not going to happen this year or next year. <laughs> um, last year we bought lights. We was our 250th celebration. We bought lights for the for the parking lot and field out front. Uh -huh. uh, we bought blacktop. It was put in the parking lot. Okay, so um, it's capital. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're all capital. They're, well, yeah. it wasn't capital because it wasn't that much money. Right. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't <laughs> over five thousand dollars. <laughs> and I'm sure that's what the point that that's what I. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. And while I'm speaking. Um, Extremely capital budget. Yes. Uh, I believe we have to pagers, pages for the next fiscal year for the capital plan with regard to light work. Mm -hmm. Oh, and a lot of some of that also might have been radios because we had the hammered with extra money on radios last year. Yeah. So, how many do you have to replace? What pagers? Pagers 20. 20. Yeah. Everybody gets a new page, a new frequency. There you go. Bingo. Mm -hmm. They change the frequency. They always do. They Tommy. always do. Tommy. I know. This is the third time. Okay. But the, the good news about the pagers is that they're the, uh, <laughs> we can the, give the old ones to the highway department. You can give the old ones to the highway department. <laughs> the, uh, the, there is a grant possibly in the works, and there's a, a reasonably good chance that that grant will be able to cover either all or the majority of that that cost so um the the word from the um franklin county chiefs at this time is that um we should hold off and buying right at this moment mm -hmm. keep the money in the pipeline if we have it um that way we have something to fall back on if this grant doesn't work it sounds like there's a reasonably good chance that we'll be able to get a matching grant where it's either subsidized or um or fully funded yeah, and the select board that are last meeting, we talked about money, things to come out of CLFRF, and those pages would come, come out of that. Come out of that. And so if the grant comes through, then that money is back. We'll back have that. We'll if the bottom line issue is they're changing the frequency because the antiquated radio system we're running on now, 
They're not going to fix that. They yeah. can't fix it. I guess that they're, what's the right yeah. word? They're, yeah, absolutely. They're, they're robbing parts from one to fix another one. Anyway, it just doesn't yeah. work. You're buying parts on eBay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you can't get the Red Sox yeah. games on them anymore. No, so that's gonna go. <laughs> but okay, yeah. Look, I think the bottom line is, if the guys are safe when there's a fire, that's the bottom line. Yeah, you get them there. They just get them there. Yeah. They get them there, but you know all the other stuff, the equipment and all that. Um, we certainly wouldn't, wouldn't want to be in a position where someone, a firefighter, was hurt because. They didn't have the right stuff. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, other questions for the fire department while they are here, Tom? No. Yeah. Okay. So are we safe? <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's see. Are we are we protected from, from fire? Check from the smoke detectors. I don't have to be more. I didn't realize how. Protected, we were. Yeah. <laughs> well, John, we're gonna miss you, man. I'll bet it's been a lot. It's been a long time. A follow was easy when I could walk across the lawn. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Thank well, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you. a great thank night. You. Welcome. Don't come back. Okay. No, nope. come back anytime. Okay, we have the uh, transfer station. Are they in? And then we have what's that? No, I think they're coming at seven. He's coming in at seven. Okay, then um, let's. Um, when is Skem's coming? Yeah, I think after transfer station. Seven fifteen. So who's here? Yeah, well, these were, these in. conversations were supposed to last longer. Uh, yeah. I would have kept I would have kept them a lot longer had I known that. <laughs> we anticipated those to be a little bit. <laughs> okay, could have talked a little bit more about Seamus. Anyway, um, we've got um, for the soil. We have to choose a date for our next meeting. Um, anybody has uh, has their. Uh, and we're looking next week. Yeah, we're looking next week. What do you think? Um, 11, 12, 13, somewhere in there. There's a select board meeting on, on Tuesday. What's that? There's a select board meeting on the 11th. Okay. <laughs> so it's not going to be that day. Okay. So 12 yeah. or 13. Yeah, it's 12, 13. Does anyone have a preference? Um, and, and what's that? I have two other meetings on the 12th. Remember, okay, that's I not okay. The 12th first. is out. Um, then let's do the 13th. Can we do the 13th? Yes, yes, okay. Then it's uh Thursday the 13th. Uh, meet here at 6 p.m. and the uh agenda will be uh in depth. The discussion will be um. Around and any of the um, uh, personnel committee recommendations, and also which way we're going with salaries, and um, the other piece of that was what Brian, I'm missing. There's one more piece. If there was any outstanding capital items, I guess capital items. That's it. Exactly. Okay. So it'd be cap and uh, and dollars. Okay. Um, Brian put out a request a week or so ago about having um, someone from the finance committee take part in a new committee uh, to look at development within the town around the new um, uh, state highway exit that is going to be here in town. Do we have any volunteers? Volunteerism is so important. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it, can't, it can't be measured. 
<laughs> it really is. So Which is why no one ever mentions it. Yeah, that's right. It's just the value. Hey, I would do it. I feel I am so blessed to be here. Hey, I would do it. I feel I am so green on this committee. The, oh, the no, history, no, no. The history oh, no. of you guys that know everything about Waitley, and I know kind of zero. Um, yeah, so anyway, well, I could yeah. do it, but yeah. He's going to be there. Yeah, he'll right. lead yeah. you through it. Who else is going to be Julie? Julie is going to be him. Fred, are you going to yeah. are you taking the no, audit? No, no. Fred's out. Fred, Fred and I were on the last. Fred and I just did it. Excused. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I am green. I don't know this town. That, <laughs> when you're green, well, what better way to learn? You yeah. learn. Well, if I, I cry, and I always mind. say to Steve when I go home, like, that guy is such a talent. He's, he's, he's going to be moody. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, <laughs> let me explain. No, let me explain. I'll, 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 I'll explain it a little bit more. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll bring it back to, to, to find it. <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard her accept it yet. <laughs> uh, the idea is that uh, the area around exit 35. Which is exit 24, oh, like exit 24 right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's the diner. It's, I mean, there's so much traffic that goes to that area of town, and it goes up 91. And we really don't have a good way to generate revenue from that area currently, right? We're talking, you know, um, when we have, when we we'll look at our, our budget projections, we have meals tax, we have cannabis excise tax, which hopefully will come through eventually. Um, you know, we have those two types of ways to generate additional non-property tax revenue, likely from people that don't live in wait. Um, so we don't have we don't have a good mechanism to do that right now. Um, and it, it needs to be appropriate for the community, obviously. Um, and we just want to sort of uh, so we have a, a consultant for a sure design group that's going to be doing all the work. So the committee is just providing the guidance as to as to what we think is. You know what we think is appropriate for the area. It's not a heavy lift. Um, We're kind of looking like a drive-through Starbucks. That's right. Deerfield has. I'll, I'll tell you from anecdotally. Everybody gets off exit thirty-five now and goes to the Surf King Deerfield and goes to Duncan in some way. Right. And so, there's there's some. I guess the trucks go south, right, and go to the diner. But right. yeah. Um, we don't have a good mechanism for for letting them leave their money lately. If I can be very blunt about it, sure. Um, the smaller buildings, it's the one that's in wait if they don't have any services that bring right. right. And, and we don't call, so so we don't collect the meals tax, that, you know, so to speak. Right. So, um, gosh, if, I mean, think about the hundreds of probably millions of people that drive through lately each year, right. and none of them stop. Yep. And I can also say anecdotally. It's not easy on, easy off until until up here. Yeah. Um, there, there's nothing easy on right. in Springfield or Northampton no. or, yeah. um, well, Northampton could be, but there's nothing around the Oxbow area. So it, oh. it's, it's really the first spot that people can yeah. you know, get off and, yeah. and get on very easily. So um, sure. this is a very important committee to the future. It will generate millions <laughs> of. I did do real estate development when I was at Dirty Wall. So oh, you know what? That's a bingo. So I'll give you, I'll in? give you my best effort. There yes. you go. It sounds like we have an investor. There you go. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we do. But yeah, the focus will be on on. No, I did do a lot of real estate development. I just don't want to use any efforts, and um, you know, there are some single family homes in the in the study area, which. We need to be sensitive too. Uh, but I also was on the board of Wayfinders or Half Housing for about 15 years. So, yes, I believe I might be able to contribute a small amount. Perfect. So, you're not green anymore. Obviously. One, one of the big, so you're in. Bob's terrific. Thank you. That you can't have a drive in. Thank you for that. That needs to be changed. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, well, try. I agree that that's an obstacle. That bylaw uh, has been in effect for. What what's yes. that up? Sorry, yeah. no problem. There's a bylaw in Waitley that you can't have a drive-through. In in that's something that and but it was put into effect. It was voted on at town meeting, and it was 
I'll bet it's been 30 or 35 years, maybe longer than that even. Well, so there's ways you can change it, and, and it, but it, it, can, it be can be changed, it can and be it's changed. probably time yep. to change it. Well, it was probably the same group that voted in the strip club at the corner. Uh, you know, the so strip clubs have been here a lot longer. It was a lot longer. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, don't bet on it. Yeah, it strip clubs enough. in general in town, a lot longer. So that's the, that's the point of the study. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe you and I could just like sit down together and chat a little bit. Yeah, terrific. All right. And they have, you have the obstacle is wetlands. Yes. Yeah. Well, this, yeah, the study area is from like the diner. Yeah. <laughs> are there wetlands? Are we getting the wetlands too? Everywhere. Yeah. Is about. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, not really, not really in the study area. Those okay. things. We're, 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 we're pretty sure. It's a lot of redevelopment. Right. Yeah. Like the old box property. The box property. Okay. Settle that. Wonderful. Okay. Yes, they are. South County Emergency Medical is in the building. Uh, my apologies if I was late. I thought it was seven fifteen for me. So yeah, well, well no, it, it is. But we'll take you. We'll take me early. Yeah. We'll take you yeah. out yeah. for Happy to be here. Thank you, everybody. Hold on. Where is where are they? I gotta find. Yes, two. Yes, two. Yes, two. Okay. We'll go. Four. Okay. Okay. You see, we're at version eight, right? Uh, that yeah. sounds correct. V eight, which is the cheapest one yet. So, if you don't have it, I recommend it. Revised number two. Yeah, it's revised number two on our. Okay. Okay. But it's version eight, and I think your your assessment could read one hundred fifteen thousand two hundred twenty eight dollars. That's the. I don't want to pair the week. Okay. Well, 115, 220. Yes. Yes. That, if, that is the most current version. Then there's a capital assessment. Yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. And we can talk, we will absolutely talk about that. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, let's, um, let's get into it and um, give us the high points and um, absolutely. What, what, what we're looking at in terms of. Uh, Continued, continued coverage for the town yes, of Wheatley. Absolutely. I'm going to do my quick little preamble because you know, I'm sure there's some people listening who aren't familiar with what South County is. We are a municipal EMS third service. So all we are responsible for is ambulance services. So we're not obfuscating stuff at a fire department budget or things like that. We're only worried about EMS. Uh, we are a municipal third service. So Deerfield is actually the fiduciary agent. So all the employees are employees of Deerfield, but we were created through an intermunicipal agreement in IMA. So we're the only department like that in the Commonwealth. And that means that Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley all appoint two representatives to the Board of Oversight. Yep. And it is with the Board of Oversight that we have developed this budget. All three towns have equal voting power uh, in that oversight board. And then once we vote on the budget there, then I, I take it and I present it to the three towns. So this represents the most recent budget that that board of oversight approved. Because um, we are uh, in that intermunicipal agreement, we're using an enterprise fund. So this is absolutely everything soup to nuts. So including post-employment benefits, including uh, employee benefits, current employee benefits, all those things are accounted for in this budget. Um, our current task is one ambulance, paramedic level 24 7. Paramedics go to school for about two and a half, three years of education. So that's one ambulance 24 7. And then we add some additional staff uh, seven days a week during our busiest hours, about 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And so we need that second ambulance just to cover all of our calls. Our call volume right now is about 1,200, 1,300 calls a year. It goes up about 10% a year every year. Um, and that is hold pretty steady. Um, there's a few reasons for that. One is this is a national trend. Everybody's getting older and we need more ambulances. Access to healthcare is getting worse throughout the country. So for a lot of people, the emergency room is their access to a primary care. And our neighbors are not in the position of having done this wonderful South County EMS IMA. So we are going mutual aid more and more often to municipalities on all four borders of these three towns because um, everybody's feeling the same crunch. And so that's that's where our call volume going up is. 
In order to provide that coverage, we have to figure out exactly what that's going to cost. Uh, and we do that with 10 full time staff, about seven to eight per diems. Uh, those per diems, like I said, you know, you have to go to school for three years to be a paramedic. So they're all paramedics full time someplace else. And they work per, uh, per diem. And so they fill in for things like vacation, sick call out, um, and extra activities. Um, so those 10 employees plus the per diems plus the benefits um, comes to. Um, uh, 1.3 million uh, for those employees, and then we add another, we sprinkle in another two, 236,000 for operating expenses. And so that's the cost of gauze and oxygen and fuel and, and those incidental stuff. From that uh, top line, the 1.6 for providing that level of care, we anticipate some revenue for building because we do have a capitalist insurance, medical insurance system and so we bill um, and we actually have excellent returns because of our demographics uh, and because of the way that we document it's all electronic so we can capture insurance data pretty quickly it gets sent off and so for FY24 I'm estimating $625,000 roughly in revenue from ambulance billing so because we're going to get that money in in billing we subtract that out of the 1.6 and because we're an enterprise fund, we have something called retained earnings. That's just like your free cash in the, in the general fund. And so if we get more billing revenue than we were anticipated, or we underspend a budget line item or something like that, it rolls back over into the following year and helps reduce the assessment in the following year. So if we only spend 5,000 out of a $10,000 IT budget, well, then we can carry that 5,000 over and put it towards the IT budget the following year. Um, our retained earnings that we have that we can apply to this budget is 292000 So that leaves that we need to come up with through appropriation $917,054. Uh, the IMA lists out how the three towns are going to share in that cost. It's a formula based on population and um, taxable property, so equalized value. Um, and in that formula, weekly's assessment is 16.76% of the total. So that $1.6 million budget that we need to do the service that the three towns want, uh, weekly share for FY24 would be $115,228. Um, I think the, generally speaking, the we see like the regular inflation changes in the operating budget stuff, you know, gauze is going up 7% because everything is going up 7%, that type of thing. The other standouts are going to be um, our uh, electric bill. Uh, it turns out they finally read the meter. So we, <laughs> we were on that like um, that building lot plan where they charge you $25 a month. And I think somebody finally figured out we were there. So um, there's a $5,000 increase to that line item. Um, and then as far as salaries, wages, employee benefits, because we're town of Deerfield employees, we're all governed by the uh, town of Deerfield class comp schedule. So the personnel committee in Deerfield recommends a COLA increase, and then it's customary for all the staff to get a staff increase that's recommended by the select board. So that is what's represented there. And the budget, or excuse me, the benefit numbers come directly from um, the clerk, treasurer collector's office. So they say, this is what your benefits are going to cost. So basically everything in that section there is supplied to us by the town of Deerfield based on, on the- And your poll was 3%? 3%, yeah. And that just comes from the town of Deerfield. Um, outside of that 3% poll, employees share in any other type of compensation or increases above that you know, yeah so what, you, what is what is that yeah so each the class comp scale so paramedics are a grade e um and then you would come in with no experience at a step one and then every year you would go up they try to redo the class comp scale every five to seven years of your field and it's they recently redid it and it's it's not as straightforward as it used to be. It's percentage wise, right? So as you go up in the scale and you make more money, the percentage increases are smaller and, yeah. and things like that. So that's the 3% on top of that, depending on where you in that scale, it might be, you know, four and a half, it might be 3.8, you know, right. on, on your hourly rate. Gotcha. Thank you. 
anything else? Uh, let's see. You know, I think that's ambulance assessment. Ambulance assessment. What is this? What are you talking about? Capital. Oh, capital, capital, capital budget. Capital. Yeah. yeah, capital. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So capital budget. This is I. I don't know that I've actually submitted a capital budget before. Um, normally, what we do is you know I talked about that billing revenue and that retained earnings, and so that six hundred and twenty five thousand dollars of estimated revenue is a little bit low. Um, we always shoot a little bit though there low there. We're conservative there because we want the room where another pandemic hits. We're not in the red trying to you know make up the difference. So when we budget that, estimate that a little bit low. When we come in a little bit high, we like to take some of that and put it aside every year for the eventual ambulance replacement. So that's just good budgeting, fiscal responsibility. We know that we'll need to buy a new ambulance every four to five years. And those ambulance costs, and I'll get to the punchline in a second, $265,000. So we've been putting away $62,000 a year. And so at the end of four or five years, we'll have enough for that replacement. We were on track this uh, fiscal year, FY24, this upcoming fiscal year, to purchase a new ambulance to replace our 2007 model. They tell us that we're supposed to replace trucks uh, every 10 years. Um, this one is outdated and not nearly as safe. Um, and the latest quote for that new ambulance is from 260 to $375,000 for the exact same truck. And build times are 700 days out. Wow. wow. 700. I guess. You That's heard me correct. Yeah. I know. We're, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, what the hell do you do if you wrap one up? <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you, uh, you beg, borrow, and steal. Um, and sometimes you will get a, um, a used truck out of a back lot someplace. And you can get a temporary license to, uh, to operate those. Um, can I just interrupt for yeah. a second? We got a question here from Joyce. Uh, yes, it's asking if the electric bill on the municipal aggregation is on the municipal aggregation for the lower rate. Yes, it is. Um, we are that facility that we are in is owned by the town of Deerfield. It's managed by um, this, the uh, public works superintendent, and that is is on that um, electric rate. That's a great question. Yeah. Um, oh, and I forgot to say, uh, I legally changed my name recently to Zoe. That's all. Nothing weird. Okay, no problem. Um, <laughs> is it do you like Zoe or is it Zoe's so, great? Zoe's Zoe, great. Z, okay. anything like that. All right. Um, so uh because we were a hundred and thousand one hundred thousand dollars short, hundred and twenty thousand dollars short for this ambulance replacement, the board of oversight and you know, we're like rubbing our heads, we don't know what to do. Another problem came up, which is in order for us to provide paramedic level service, we have cardiac monitors. They are the things that interpret 12 lead EKGs. They allow us to administer electrical therapy. It's what saved that football player's life um, recently in defibrillation. And we have two of those for our two frontline trucks. We have three trucks, a third truck is just at the basic level. Those light pack monitors are about seven years old. Um, they are also on a 10 year replacement schedule. They were purchased under a grant. And We've recently found out that that generation of monitor, the manufacturing process for the electrical circuitry um, was harmful to the environment. So they stopped making those mm -hmm. and they've changed their supplier, but it means that the monitors we have are um, not repairable. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, uh, it's like, it's one of these common you know, themes, uh, right? So they told us that, they told us the 360 for the ambulance, we come from here. So the Board of Oversight decided um, the monitor replacements are only about a year out if we order them today. And the Board of Oversight voted, we need these. If one of them cracks or whatever, we don't have a backup. So we need to replace these immediately. At least if the third ambulance goes down as non-repairable, we have the others. Yep. So they were taking a portion of the money that we had put aside for the capital replacement of the ambulance to instead purchase the replacement cardiac monitors early. Order them now, and so that way we can get in the pipeline for that. They'll be about nine years old, and then we'll, we'll have solved that problem. That puts us a little bit further behind on the ambulance replacement, so the Board of Oversight voted, you know what? 
We don't have the money ourselves to purchase the ambulance, but this is a values judgment as just as much as it is a fiscal decision. So at least put the question out to the member towns. Some towns have capital stabilization, some towns have free cash. And so we submitted this capital expense budget to purchase that replacement ambulance. And it is also divvied up according to that intermunicipal agreement. So we are $275,000 short for that replacement ambulance, um, but weekly share would be 46,000. Yeah. Now, if one town, did, you know, was like, we can't, we can't afford this or whatever, then it's not like the other two would have to pony up the difference. We would just be sure we wouldn't be able to make that purchase. Have you spoken with the other towns? I have spoken to the other towns. Uh, I did not get any sort of indication, even just like temperature in the room about it. I know, uh, I know Deerfield's in a pretty tight spot right now, and they have a lot of capital uh, projects uh, yeah. on the burner. Yeah. Um, this is the type of thing where that third ambulance for us is simultaneously a reserve ambulance and also necessary. We need two ambulances to cover our calls. And so you need three ambulances up there. Um, you know, one needs to be de decontaminated, get service or things like that. The third ambulance is also the ambulance that does our football game standbys, our special events, 350th parades, things like that, and actually generates some revenue uh, as well for special standbys. So I, we need that third ambulance, but you know, if it goes out of service and we can't, you know, replace it mm -hmm. for some time, it's not as a dire situation as the cardiac monitors were. And so that's yeah. why we prioritize that and decided to put this towards the house. Um, thanks. I just want to go back to the arithmetic. Yes. So I think you said you've been putting aside six to five a year. Yes. For four years. So that's 250. Yep. And now only 100 of that. The board of oversight has decided it can be available for the new ambulance. So, did the cardiac monitors cost 150? That is correct. That is exactly correct. Um, thank you. Yeah. Oh, ask a couple questions. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Um, sure. What retained earnings do you, do you project that you'll have um, going into fiscal year? So you're not spending, right? What are you gonna What are you gonna carry forward that you're not appropriating to either of the all retained or... earnings currently certified and available? Yeah, are accounted for in these budgets, okay. including the 150 for the cardiac monitor replacement. Okay, so whatever you have from 23, you we're spending down. Um, that 625 thousand dollars that I am. Budgeting for anticipated revenue, you'll notice it is up significantly. That estimate also does not take into account Medicare, Medicaid um, recently got a 3% increase on reimbursements across the board. Mm -hmm. So I know That's Medicare, great. Medicaid accounts for about 30% of our billing revenue. Wow. So take a third of our you know, total revenue, increase it by 3%. So I think, um, and even just looking at our our current revenue is through February. I think we are on track for um, a little bit over $700,000 in revenue in FY24. And so that would give us the money that we need to put aside for ambulance replacements. And assuming our call volume is going up 10%, mm -hmm. you know, like all these compounding yeah. factors still give us that, that buffer that we would need if. There's another lockdown and nobody's going to the EPDs, you know, or, or things like that. So to get that new ambulance, your projected income looks like it may cover it, but there's a time factor here where you have to order sooner than later. And what's the down payment on that? Uh, the There is no, the, the payment is due immediately for the cost of the chassis. So that money goes to Ford, and then they say, okay, here's your chassis. That chassis gets moved to the, um, the upfitter. Um, and then the balance is then due at time of delivery. Mm -hmm. um, and there was questions about that we've been talking about, and it, it's we don't have any sort of conclusion yet for me to share here, but you know, could we authorize that town meeting? Um, to borrow the money, knowing that we might not even have to borrow it by the time that these 
things yeah. come up, you know, we will have the money on hand. Yeah. We're also looking into the option to lease an ambulance. That is an option that is available. It is not popular when you have the ability to purchase an ambulance um, for either for the obvious or not obvious reasons. Um, but I'm also reviewing that as well. It's not so popular in this region, but there are a few departments that have gone down that route. So I'm picking their brain right now to, to see what made them choose that. Um, okay. But I, again, I, I don't have that information here to present tonight. I'm sorry about that. So when do you think, well, how do we budget? something that is may or may not happen may or may not may happen. or may not happen plus the other towns you have these plates spinning all over the movie place. targets i know um uh, the short answer is i don't know um the long answer is you know i know i know i, 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 I know <laughs> I've got an answer. I won't even give a long answer if you've got an answer. I've, I've, got, I've got an answer for wait at least. Yeah. And that is, again, CLF RF money. So there you if, go. The, if we need it, it's the, there. The select board, board, again, is sort of has, hasn't approved them yet. But yeah. Mm -hmm. That is um, among the line items that we said we will likely fund. We can put off the other towns don't approve and it doesn't come through this year. We just Hang don't on to appropriate it. that money yeah. out of that source. Mm -hmm. All right. I have two more questions. I'm afraid, I'm afraid it has an answer. <laughs> I have two more questions. Um, can you give a quick summary about any discussions that have happened with the town of Hatfield about joining the service? Mm -hmm. um, only that a Hatfield select board member reached out to the Board of Oversight and just was like, like, what are you guys and what would this look like? Um, there was no official request by the town of Hatfield for South County to like make a proposal and South County did not prepare a proposal or anything like that. The math is very easy because everything's outlined in the intermunicipal agreement about what shares are and how to calculate those things. So it's like kind of shooting from the hip. You know, I was like, if a community your size were to join, we would need two trucks 24 seven, you know, that's gonna cost $2 million and at $2 million divided this way, roughly that. Um, but that was as far as, you know, I wouldn't even call it a discussion. It's just kind of like, um, yeah, you know, sitting around the table. Um, there's always kind of an underlying murmur in the region about like, you know, how do we regionalize? Could we become part of South County? Things like that. Conway. Um, Conway. Yeah. I know Leverton and Shootsbury for a while, you know, just because Amherst is, you know, yeah. sprung out so much. Um, like I say, the math is easy, um, but to make it happen in order to ratify the intermunicipal agreement, the current signers to the agreement have been signed. Wait, wait. At town meeting would have to approve the adoption. And so, like, there are just, you know, plus the town coming in. I, that is a multi year process if, if that were to ever be discussed. But the Board of Oversight have to have that conversation. My last question is what do you think the rate for, for mutual aid, right? Well, yeah. Um, let's, let's, let's just have it as an example. If, if, if scams go to, goes to half it on mutual aid, there's, is, is there a fee that's paid to scams? Do you just do the billing or how does that work? And then my, my follow-up question is going to be sort of what's the ratio of how many times scams goes out of the three towns as opposed to somebody coming into the towns and mutual aid is on, on the, on the basis that at the end of the day, everything kind of equals out. There right? is, it should uh, be. There is a word, there is a pivotal word in the phrase mutual aid, and it is mutual, right? right. And yeah. And so um, mutual aid is the term for whenever a community doesn't have a resource available that they normally would, and so they request help from a neighboring community. I, it's like what happens when there's a structure fire, right? You'd be fools to be able to cover a structure fire yourself because it happens so rarely. So you'd be like, no, all the towns are together. cover. Um, so when we go mutual aid, say to Hatfield, it's because they don't have an ambulance available, and we treat that and bill that just as if it was a call and we'd be dear for settlement. So we don't charge the town of Hatfield for that service, and then we just bill the patient normally. Um, the other thing that we can do is called an intercept. So because we are paramedic level, if there is already, like Conway has a basic level ambulance, if they need a paramedic because the patient needs advanced life support, then we can literally intercept them on the way to the hospital, get on board. And that is different. That is not a mutual aid. So we actually charge the community. We would send them like a flat fee bill to the town of Conway for that. 
And we only do those calls if it doesn't take our like full ambulance fleet out of service. So we only do an intercept if there's still one truck left in service. So we're not lowering our own thing. Um, the ratio, it, it really ebbs and flows. Um, Hatfield is not a concern, you know, like a couple times a year we go down there, a couple times a year they talk to here for, you know, calls in Waitley or things like that. Um, we go to Amherst and Northampton whenever they have a large structure fire, but whenever we get slammed with multiple car accidents and Sunderland Amherst comes in and helps us. The big problems and hurdles for us are the for-profit private ambulance services to our north. I'm talking about American Medical Response. Um, and <laughs> the providers there are great. They're trained to the same level as we are. They're, they're there because for the same reasons. But as a for-profit company, by definition, they legally have to put profit first. They have to yeah. legally you know, worry about the shareholders. And so because gas costs the same for everybody, because you know, uh, reimbursements are the same for everybody. The only place where they can trim fat and increase profit is from staffing. And so we've seen, certainly through staffing difficulties going on and through the pandemic and people leaving healthcare, they've really struggled. So our, our mutual rates have gone up significantly to the community's AMR covers. For every, I'm trying to think about this, how to present this ratio so it makes sense. For every mutual aid we receive from AMR, we give them like 2.8. Um, so there is really that disparity there. Um, and the other problems too are there are a few communities even further out in Franklin County that don't have their own ambulance or EMS coverage. EMS is not a essential service in the Commonwealth, so you're not required to find a means to provide it the same way you are fire and police protection. And so as a result, these communities who can't fund 1.6 million rely on their neighbors. And what it does is it pulls these services out. So communities like Gill, Leiden, Shelburne, AMR is busy responding to them to cover their ambulance calls. And then we in turn have to back the bill AMR. And so those are discussions that we're having at the county level to try to figure out how do we kind of bolster um, everybody so we're not subsidizing these other communities um, in that regard. So uh, it is, that is all to say, mutually is a factor. Um, I think it's about 10 or 12% of our total calls last year. Um, it wasn't nearly that, it was only about 7% the year before that. Um, it is a factor, but our staffing is based around our call volume in here to the summer. Thank you. Very good. Any further questions for Zoe? Um, no. <clears throat> Brian? Yeah. Brian, did you have something? Um, no, there's just another comment on here. Like, you know, okay, comment. Okay, this is from Joyce. C C L F. Our F money does have a deadline for commitment. Right, right. So end, end of next year. Okay. End of next year. So if we're going to use that money, we would have yeah. to yeah, that's have cool. to target that earlier. We cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for the explanation. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I love talking about stuff I know about. It's like really, <laughs> it's really easy and fun. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, we think it's still a a bargain. Uh, thank you. I, I'm actually, I've been requested in um, the Berkshires coming up soon. Uh, Beckett and Otis are looking to potentially regionalize and looking at our model as, as really? kind of like the gold standard. Yeah. I've already been to Central Mass, I've been to Connecticut to speak about it. Um, and we've got our annual Western Mass EMS meeting coming up and I'm sitting on a panel to talk about um, regionalization and stuff. So I think like everybody in Waitley should be very proud of, of what they have accomplished. Uh, um, in creating this service, so is there a succession plan for me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is there something I need to know about? Uh, well, you're doing a lot of traveling. That's yeah. why. Um, what you know, uh, trying to grab you or what? Uh, Far the east you go. But yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah there's deeper pockets out there. No, it's uh, uh, you know, this is the community I live in, and I'm I'm very proud of what we've accomplished here. Good. All righty. Thank yes, you again. Your house, house goes on the market. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you.
Thank you for that. Okay. Um, our uh, so no, no Fran. No, Fran's here. Fran's here. Where's Fran? Okay. Top left corner. Oh, oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Francis Fortino. I'm just waiting. <laughs> In the wings. Okay. You never change. Hang on. We got to get you out. to get your papers out here. Oh, uh, where is he? Okay. Does anybody have one? Page three. Say that again. Ph dash three. Ph four was in the new packet. Came in as a new set. Now I'm confused. I, uh, I know I got it. I don't remember getting it. I got my double health. Gonna, there we go. Okay, so is this um, yeah. the county inspection? Go to three. Transfer right. state. Oh, transfer. Okay. Three. Okay. <laughs> pop, 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 pop. <laughs> PH. Okay. All right. We're getting there. Don't worry. We're getting old. Friends. Transfer station. <laughs> don't worry it took a long enough time to get this done <laughs> this one <laughs> okay transfer station budget here we go okay so transfer station is requesting seventy one thousand five hundred and eighty one dollars thank you for having a nice size font on there that we can read <laughs> Uh, we have an increase of 13,427 for a 23.09% change. That's, I think that's the outdated. No, no, that's. Uh -oh. I got the wrong one. Yeah, you're on the old one. The one they handed out this morning. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, 7158. You like the new one better. Okay. Yeah. You'll, you'll right. like the new one much better. <laughs> okay. Well, why don't you get into the new one and we new can one's up. roll along? Okay. Um, well, as mentioned, we uh, just got the numbers from our hauler yesterday late, and I plugged them in. Uh, I had gone from a worst case scenario, which was what was predicted by the hauler, among others, and that's how the 71,000 came up. But turns out we uh, he was able to get a better price, and um, although it's close to what uh, the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District might have gotten, but this is still a better deal. So uh, not much change except for, it's hard to read now, haul costs for, or is that tip fees? It's hard to, you scrolled all the way over. I'll look at my tip fees. All right. Yeah, uh, the bigger, big numbers different is uh, $2,830 for um, tip fees. They have gone up big time. Um, all What's around the world. What's driving that, Fran? Excuse me? What's driving that? Ah, uh, nobody wants to take, well, we don't have trash <laughs> disposal we facilities. Landfills. We don't have any of those anymore in Western Mass. So yeah, the yeah. stuff goes out of state, pretty far out of state, actually. So this, uh, Tip fees are going up. There's transportation costs in there too, but um, that's what's driving it. And so, and that's not gonna go down. The second, uh, well, next line below that, you see uh, trash hauling or recycling hauling. Um, that went up a little bit just by virtue of, uh, um, the uh what's he counting in there um surcharge for diesel prices so that's built in here a uh, couple more lines down you'll see recycling tipping tip fees went up the murph used to be free it's no longer free we pay now over 100 bucks per ton so you can see that appeared a couple of years ago, I guess. And now it's up to 100, not quite 100 a ton. So everything else pretty close to what it was. Um, it's a little haul cost built in for the compost haul. And uh, what else do we have here? 
a 10% increase for landfill inspections. So these are mostly for closed landfill. So that's it. Okay. Um, go ahead. Yeah, I forgot the last item. There's there's also fuel charges for the other haul, hauling yeah. things here, recycling hauling things. Yeah. Um, does anyone have a question, Fran, regarding the transfer station? Yes. I have a quick question. Um, maybe you answered. I think we talk about this every year. Every year. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> when it, I know the bags, the bags cost X, and the bags pay for what? Uh, well, we had revenue last fiscal year of 48,943. That includes 5,600 in grants money. A little and a little bit more. So bags are the biggest revenue part of that, 41,000. So bags and stickers, I should say. Mm -hmm. So we, we come close to covering our costs minus payroll, obviously. But okay. yeah. So does everybody have to have a sticker? Or a bag. No, no. You either have a bag or if it's a big item or something to put a sticker on. Okay, my my but my point is this for recycling. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know darn well that there are individuals who do a lot of recycling, do not buy bags because they don't they don't use the compact, right? But they use the recycling bins mm -hmm. and we pay for those. So mm -hmm. Why not have stickers on cars <laughs> along with the bags so that you know who should be using those bins? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you're suggesting some kind of a flat fee yeah, to use the transfer it. station. We've thought about it, but actually within uh, money that we, we used to get and we still get depending on what the market uh, value of the recyclables is we still get money back and last year I think there was two thousand dollars we got last fiscal year so um, that's always a possibility although uh, doubtful whether the markets are going to come back to where um, we're not paying for recycling so but we do get some back so it's it's a little bit um, hard to calculate unless we went to a flat kind of, you know, sticker to use the transfer station, you know, for everybody. But yeah. so far our budgets have been pretty close and pretty tight. And we, we, we do get grants to, by virtue of having such great recycling. So we don't want to discourage it. We don't want to see stuff at the side of the road. And we take, um, bottle deposit bottles and cans and stuff and we we get them out of there for free to uh uh service net folks and things like that so yeah we just haven't really thought it was worthwhile to implement a sticker fee for the use yet but yeah i so get your point okay i get your point yeah so far we haven't gotcha implemented. all right all right cool. you don't there's no problem with people from out of town using the recycling bin i mean how would you know well be i mean the, the, the attendants well the attendants no they know some of the people but they don't know mm, all of the people i'll bet they know i was gonna say i'll they bet they know a lot of them well they know a lot of them out of town with, five years ago then they're still coming they're still coming but well, with, Re with Reggie down there, she knows everybody. But uh, yeah, and in the meantime, the other folks do also. I would say, maybe we get the give them a copy of the residence book. So if they really were in doubt and they ask the person where you're from, <laughs> yeah, they could, I'm just they more interested in the revenue stream, Fran. That's all. Okay, mm -hmm. that's all. That's fine. Does anyone have any questions, Fran? Um, okay, Fran. Um, do we have anything else to the foothills district you want to got no capital no I should mention though that at some point we may 
want to purchase the the compactor, either the current one for a, a highly depreciated price, or and or get a new one as as a capital expense, because we've been paying for years and years on as a rental, and it's yeah that, that could save a bunch of money. Yeah. Okay. Um, board of health is level, but there's what's that? I said board of health is level. Yeah. Level fund bills is level. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, or easy. That's true enough. Okay. So I'll please. Is there going to be a, um, I just probably on the website <laughs> for the um, contaminated um, the disposal? Hazards. Yes. You didn't uh, get your transfer station calendar put up on your fridge yet? <laughs> Even the well, Waitley scoop? Yeah, again. September 22nd or something like that. Okay. I didn't know those existed. To be honest, you don't live in this town. Yeah. You can't throw your trash. Uh, when you buy a sticker for your car, you oh, get yeah. the. Uh... I thought they might want to put some out here at the, oh. the town opposite. I can use it for magnets, you know. Yeah. That would be nice, man. Mm -hmm. Take yeah. your, uh, <laughs> drop some off. Well, there. you know, you can take. There are around the county, there are different dates for hazardous waste collection. And, okay. and uh, your residents can go oh, elsewhere fine. too and pay, uh, pay fees. Hey. Mm -hmm. Okie doke. Yeah, we'll find them. Okay. Uh, Are we you, good? Man. Thank you. Thank we'll you, Fran. Thanks, Fran. You're welcome. Have a good night. Have a good night. Yep, you too. All right. See you at the station. All right. You. Okay. Um, it looks like that's about it. We. That's the last of our appointments. Yeah. Okay. Anything else that you'd, you'd like to uh, address? We decided on 13th, right? We have right. a date. Yeah, we have um, <clears throat> a finance committee member going to the new committee. So, yeah, so those two things are done. Thank and uh, Keith's in the room. He must want something. I just came to know if you're going to get around to discussing the, the, kind of the capital stuff again. I, we're we're going to do it on the 13th. Okay, I just okay. All right. I had given Brian some information. Hopefully, I saw the truck got information. It. I got it. I I want. It. So we lock. Yeah. And all that stuff and, yeah. and work with the number of stuff that Joyce yeah. has and Jim Perkinbell and his. Right. Stuff. Jim will be here at the next meeting. He's out of town now, so uh, okay. So that'll that'll be good. Yeah. That's all. Awesome. Okay. All righty, so we have a motion. Uh, well, actually, on? one thing. Yeah. I, I just wanted to address Lynn Shibley's email because I feel like it should be addressed. Or... Should be a what? Addressed. Addressed what? What every, the e emails? Um, Lynn wrote a fairly angry email to all of us, and I just want to get clear the air, even if. Yeah. Um... I didn't really, I didn't read it very much other than um, I did, I did go over it when, when it, when it came to the part of that there was a gender issue with our discussion, I stopped it and I said, and that has no place and that's, that's an opinion. The, the thing was an opinion from top to bottom and you cannot argue opinions. Um, and she has a right to her opinion, and um, that's fine. But that's just a, um, it's not something that we're going to address. So. Um, Paul, yep. I, I agree with you that it's not for discussion. Um, okay. I, I'd like to suggest that um, really in, um, in deference to Lynn's long service, that we officially added to our record. That does not mean we have to discuss it. It simply means just as we've let other people make comments that we, I mean, it came a bit out of order, it came out to the meeting, but I think that that would be appropriate given her, 
Can we put the Giving her standing. Yeah. Can we, <laughs> sure. Can we put okay. the minutes of this meeting and we acknowledge and we've all read and absorbed the letter that she sent? Yep. That's it. So we saw the letter. We saw the letter. We read it. Most of us have read most of it. And um, and we move on. Yeah. So, okay. Any other comments? No. I make a motion. We adjourn. Yes. I'll second it. We are adjourned. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay.